Hey everybody, Troy here and welcome. Today I'll be using Windows Client Hyper-V to perform a clean installation of both Windows Server 2022 and Windows Server 2025. Why? Well, maybe you've never installed either one of these and you want to see what the installation process looks like as a virtual machine in Client Hyper-V. Maybe you're already an old hat at Server 2022 and you want to compare that installation to the new look and feel of a 2025 installation. Or maybe you just want to stay ahead of the curve and bring Server 2025 into your home lab setup to start playing with the newest server operating system in the Microsoft arsenal. Now, the first thing we need to do is get our hands on some valid evaluation ISO images. Now, for both of these operating systems, all we have to do is open the browser of our choosing, and we're going to do a quick search for server evaluation download. That'll work. And what that'll do is that'll take us to the Microsoft Evaluation Center. Now, this is chock full of some goodies. And you'll see here, starting at their main page, I've got options to download eval copies of Windows 11, Windows Server 2025. I'm just going to simply click the Evaluate Now, and I'm taken to a splash page that allows me to get started for free. I'm going to download the ISO image, so I'll show you a clean install with that. I will also do a video on how we can use the VHD as part of an installation as well. Click on download the ISO. Now I'm taken to a registration page, which I'm going to fill in to prompt my download. I'm just gonna rip through the form right now. I'm gonna hit download now, and I'm taken now to my actual download page. Now, I can grab various language formats, but I'm gonna grab the simple English copy for Troy, and away I go with this download. This download is about 5.6 gigs. It's gonna take a couple minutes for me, which I'm going to fast forward. And there we are, that ISO is fully downloaded. Now, I wanna grab also the ISO image for Windows Server 2022. I'm gonna do the same thing, Windows Server 2022 download. It's gonna take me again to, I want the first one that I can find that takes me to the Evaluation Center. I'm gonna click right there, and I'm gonna do the, exactly the same process again. And in this case, I'm gonna grab the 64-bit ISO edition of the English operating system. Now this download here is 4.7 gigabytes and I'm going to do the same kind of editing magic. Wow, these are powerful. Now that everything's downloaded, I can close that browser. I'm gonna flip to my downloads folder and there they are right there. Pro tip, rename these bad boys before you get them mixed up. So this top one here, this guy here was my Windows server 2022 and the first one i downloaded with this big ugly text phrase here was my windows server 2025 got it now i don't like to leave these in my downloads folder i'm going to actually grab these things copy them and move them to a folder that i keep on my hard drive everything related to my virtual machines and uh, i have a folder marked isos and in there i'm going to store these things so I can find them anytime I want to use them. And there we go. Now we're gonna move into Hyper-V and let's install it. And hello Hyper-V, we are ready to rock. Now I've got a clean slate here. Hyper-V is empty and ready to go for us. This is in its default configuration with one exception. If you're following along at home, one thing that I've done is I've already gone into my virtual switch manager and I have created one of all of the different virtual switches that Hyper-V has to offer. It comes with a default switch. I have since added a private switch, an internal switch, and an external switch. I'm gonna be using a private switch in this particular installation just to get through the installation and keep have a nice isolated virtual machine environment. Okay, we're ready for the actual install. I'm gonna right click on the server name and select new and virtual machine. I can also get that under the action menu, new virtual machine. And over here on the action pane, you can see I've got a new option as well. New virtual machine, up comes my installation wizard, and I'm gonna hit next and give this thing a sensible name. WinServe 2022 Lab Server, great. Now you can see the default location for the Windows Server VM files. It's deep in the program data folder. I personally don't like it there. I like to manage my machines a little bit easier. I'm gonna click on this checkbox here to store the machine in a different location. Click Browse. And I have that folder that I created, I mentioned called Virtual Machines. In that folder, 
I have a folder called active VMs and I click there, select that folder. And this now will be stored in the area that I want it and hit next. And I'm prompted to choose the generation. I'm going to take the newest generation gen two to take advantage of the newest flexibility and functionality of hyper V and I'm going to hit next. And now I get to select how much Ram I'm going to allocate, how much memory I'm going to allocate to this virtual machine. Now I've got a pretty tidy machine going here. I'm going to give it eight gigs of Ram eight, one, nine, two. And I'm going to ensure that this checkbox here use dynamic memory is still check by default move to the next screen up comes the option to choose my virtual switch I mentioned that I created a series of virtual switches they all do different things I'm going to select the private virtual switch and that will allow this machine to talk to the other server or the other virtual machines in that isolated environment without them being connected to the host. Let's hit next and create a virtual hard disk. Now, by default, it's going to assume the machine name and it's going to put it in the same location that I stored the primary files. I'm going to allow this to stay at its defaults. If you're concerned about space, you could reduce this, but pay attention to the fact that these are dynamically expanding disks. And what that means basically is it's not going to secure this full 127 gigs. What it's going to do is it's going to grab the size that it needs and that footprint will grow. It will dynamically expand over time, which means that it's going to minimize the footprint only taking the space that it needs. Next we go. We're looking now to choose how the operating system will be installed. Okay. I can select later, but I already know that I have an ISO. I'm going to select a bootable CD or DVD ROM and I'm going to click the image file and I'm going to navigate to the location where I put those ISOs originally, which is on my D drive in the virtual machines folder called ISOs. Let's browse to it. There it is right there. Windows server 2022. Select that. You can see that it is now going to be loaded into the disk drive container of my virtual machine. I'm going to hit next and there's my summary. This is going to be a machine called WinServe 2022 Lab Gen 2, 8 gigs of RAM with a private virtual switch. And it's going to be located on my D drive in a virtual machines folder called Active VMs. The operating system will come from the ISO that's located inside this D drive. And that should be enough for me to hit finish. Done. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing now for the Windows Server 2022 machine. The wizard process is going to be exactly the same. I'll speed it up a little bit for the purposes of reducing repetition. There we go. Two for two. So the actual creation process was exactly the same with Hyper-V and these two particular ISOs. There is no immediate need for me to go in and adjust any of the starting settings. This should kick off right out of the gate. Now, this is often the hardest spot for my students when we're trying to open these machines. If you're not comfortable with Hyper-V, you want to slow down and take note of how I'm going to do this. I'm going to double click the machine and up will come a window. Now this window here is my, this allows me to turn the machine on, but what's going to happen is I'm going to see uh, an option to hit a key to allow the operating system to load from the ISO, from the DVD. And so in order to do that, I'm going to have to hit the start button. I'm going to have to click with my mouse inside this window and then hit a key to have that keystroke get caught by the virtual machine. Let me show you. I'm going to hit start, wait for the prompt. There it is. I'm going to select inside and hit a key and that will be enough to catch that installation now if i wasn't slow enough you probably get a great big white window that says uh no bootable drive or or it, it basically says no bootloader found and um you'll know it when you see it okay this is the screen that i was so awkwardly trying to describe for you if you see this screen you probably have missed your click and you want to turn this machine off and do it again 
The turn off button is right here. You will turn it off, warning you that this is like pulling the plug out of the wall. I'm going to turn that machine off and it's ready to try the process one more time. I'm going to do the same thing over here for my Windows Server 2025 server. I'm going to hit this again, start button, watch for the prompt. Click inside, hit a key, and that should catch the loader. There we go. And now I've got my first look at these two side by side. So you can see the Windows Server 2022. This is very traditional. This is Windows 10. You'll see that this boot up screen here is very familiar to us. Server 2025, hey, we've got some fancier fonts, a little slightly different screen. Um, so far, exactly the same process though. I'm gonna hit next and hit the install button for my Windows Server 2022 machine. And I'm gonna click over here, hit next. And this is now prompting me for the keyboard. I'm gonna select the US default, hit next. And now I get an option to install. The Windows Server 2022 took me straight to install button. I can use this as the installer as well as the Windows Server uh, restore environment. I can repair this. So I'm going to install. I have to click this agree button before it'll go through because this clean installation will wipe out everything that's on this machine. Of course, there's nothing on it already, but I'm going to click that button next and away we go. All right, so now I'm back to the same screen. So the Windows Server 2025 took a little bit more input, but now I'm back at the same place choosing the difference, the different version that I want, the, the OS. Windows Server comes with different flavors, different editions. We have a standard and a data center edition. The standard evaluation is, another word for that is the server core installation. This is the non-graphical user interface version. This is command line. You, you configure that or manage that using a product called sconfig or server config or PowerShell, or you have to manage it remotely through a product called server manager. I'm gonna go with standard desktop and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Windows Server 2025, standard evaluation with desktop experience. I'm gonna hit next and next. All right, so up comes my applicable notices and license terms for which I have to agree to both. No problem. I'm going to click the same thing over here and I can walk through and there's an accept button behind my head. There it is. Ah, okay. Now, you see a little bit of different thing here. In Windows Server 2022, I'm ready to choose my installation. Now, this is going to be a custom installation right here. This is, uh, although it says advanced, this is actually a fairly straightforward thing. This is what we call a clean installation. It is going to wipe out everything, treat this hard disk because there's nothing on it because right now there isn't. But if I wanted to upgrade a previous edition or maintain some of the files and applications and settings, I could use the upgrade edition. I'm going to hit custom and up comes the options for the available disks. Remember, I only gave it one hard disk. It was a virtual file and it is 127 gigs. The Windows operating system sees that and uh, is ready to work with it. In the Windows Server 2022 world, it's already found that. So I wasn't prompted in the same way. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit next for the Windows Server 2022. It's running my installer. And I'm going to do the same thing over here for the Windows Server 2025. Let's click there. Now, this prompt is, again, asking me to, it's just warning me to make sure that I know what I'm doing. This, this is a recap of my installer. The first one didn't give me that. This is actually telling me that I'm going to install Windows Server 2025, the desktop experience, and there's nothing going to be there aside from a fresh installation. I'm going to hit install, and away we go. You can see the 2022 machine is ready to do a restart. It's moving on to the next stage of its install. Windows Server 2025, still working. It's going to take a little bit. It's not egregiously longer. It's uh, just a, a slightly different process. Let's go back to my Server 2022. And I'm prompted for my admin 
password. So it's going to create an administrator account by default. I've got to give it a complex password here. I'm going to use a simple lab password here. I'm going to go p at sswrd. This is not a functional production environment. I would never do that in a live environment. But this meets the complexity requirements and it's easy to remember. I'm going to hit finish. This guy's going here and there we go. This guy is up and running. Let's load this up and you'll see that the Windows Server 2022 server manager is loading. There she is, good to go. Now let me prompt this out of the way and get back to the Server 2025 environment. Same requirement. It's going to create a default administrator account for me. I've got to give it a password that meets the requirements. Again, sticking with a very simple password here and confirming that password, hitting enter, and away we go. There we go. And it's sitting there right there. Okay, so I'm going to log in. The new profile is built. And now it's prompting me for a series of diagnostic data. This did not happen on my server 2022 machine. I went straight to the server dashboard. I'm going to close this little prompt here about the Windows Admin Center. I'm going to drop this, minimize that screen. There you go. I'm looking at this ready to go. The server 2025, though, it wants some more information. So I get to in include what kind of diagnostic data I want to send. Remember, I'm not connected to the internet here, so I can say anything I want. And now I'm looking at the server manager tab for Windows Server 2025. So fundamentally, they're very, very similar right out of the gate. There's my Windows Server 2022 with the Server Manager dashboard. There's 2025 with the Server Manager dashboard. Now, aside from some slightly different fonts at the Server Manager level, it's hard to tell them apart. But when you drop down, you're going to notice that the Windows Server 2022, very Windows 10 feel. The start menu here on the left programs and, and functions on the side. And the Windows Server 2025, very Windows 11 -y. Is that a word? Uh, centered area here with my start menu. And I'm going to find that as I explore this operating system, it's going to have a lot of similar functionalities, or at least from a settings perspective as Windows 11. Okay, now I've got to configure these things. I've got to get them ready for my post-installation deployment. I'll cover all that in another video. The important thing here is that now you've seen side-by-side -side comparison of these two installations. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.